say football's a game of two halves, and believe me, that was a game of two halves. People look devastated. It was kind of a horror movie unfolding very, very slowly before your eyes. This is incredible, you know? Am I believing this? What's going on? You feel as if, you know, maybe someone up there is looking down on you. Rattling on the, on the windows. You, you, you mind have gone. It is by far the greatest night of my life. It was just brilliant. This is like a film. I, I mean, if I watched that game as a film, I was like, I'd walk out and go, ah, I just did that for the story, and that had never happened. And tonight, Liverpool take on the might of AC Milan in the Champions League final in Istanbul. It was one of those fantastic European days in the sense that it was gloriously sunny. You woke up, you thought, something good's going to happen here. Something's another one of those, you know, something's good, we're going to win it today. For Liverpool fans, the 2004-2005 Premiership campaign had left a lot to be desired. Finishing fifth in the league and a massive 37 points behind champions Chelsea. It had been a frustrating season for the Reds, but not in Europe. Here they had excelled beyond their wildest dreams and were now on their way to the Champions League final. Their destination was Istanbul, a city where the Black Sea meets the Med, Europe meets Asia, and where Liverpool Football Club were meeting AC Milan for the most important trophy in club football. Milan were regarded by many as the best team in Europe but they weren't about to take any victory for granted. Liverpool's got a good team, they've got a good side, they've got very good players, quality players, so um, no, before the final everybody knew that it was going to be a very hard game. We knew that Liverpool were a hard nut to crack, a team that played counter-attacking football, a team that never gave up. Liverpool had torn up the form book on their way to Istanbul. They'd overcome the likes of Bayer Leverkusen, Juventus and Chelsea to reach the final. And as soon as we beat Chelsea, I mean, all of supporters on the streets said, oh, we're going to win it, we're going to win it, and, you know, giving the players the belief. But at the back of the line, you realise that you're playing AC Milan, and so I realised how, you know, how difficult it was going to be. It's uh, the biggest trophy you can win with a club. And, um, you know, to um, take part in a final with, with Liverpool was just, um, you know, unbelievable. And um, so was the mood in the camp. Everybody was uh, buzzing and, and looking forward to it. It was a complete mission, um, the whole going to Turkey thing, and uh, I think that just added, added to the, the, the special occasion. Football crook, I would have got to uh, Turkey that day. We flew out uh, to Istanbul from Milan, actually, and uh, we found out that there were very, very few AC Milan supporters, so the ratio one to four was full of Liverpool fans. Drove into the centre from the airport. Only Liverpool flags, only people wearing Liverpool shirts. Dude, everybody was talking about it. They were talking about the numbers, uh, number of people going there. You know, I think we ended up having 50 or 60,000 uh, scousers in, in Istanbul, which is uh, fantastic. I never saw an Italian. I never saw one um, the whole time I was there. The square was bouncing just full of Liverpool fans. They couldn't see any Milan fans with them, where they were. But then they just realised that this, you know, it really is to be another biggest game we've probably ever played. It's definitely taking over. We take over every day, don't we? <laughs> Best of horses in, in the, the world. world! Oh, the build-up was extraordinary. <laughs> it was just so exciting. Everyone loved the fun atmosphere, the friendly atmosphere. And uh, it, was, it was a great, it was a great uh, afternoon as well, building up towards the game. With judgment night fast approaching, the fans' next mission was to get to the Ataturk Olympic Stadium. The venue for the final was, quite literally, in the middle of nowhere. The only thing you could say, anyone seen the wacky races on television, that's the taxi drivers. It was all, it was like three lanes, but there was five lanes of cars, and it was just absolute bedlam. <laughs> it 
If it was bad for those going by taxi to the ground, it was even worse for those going by coach. We're on the way to the game. You just see fans just walking from over hills, and you'd be thinking you know, we must be close because the fans are walking. And then, you know, it still took us another five or ten minutes on the coach. It was in the middle of nowhere. It was on hills, seemed like hills and mountains everywhere, and just fans walking up and down and trying to get to the ground. So that's when we realised, you know, how difficult it must have been to get to the ground. Everyone just started getting off off the buses and just walking over all the rocks and the hills and then the desert land, the sort of nuclear waste ground that we walked over to get there. And I had big shoes on like this. I hadn't thought through clearly. From where they dropped us to the ground was like a cross between the moon and Glastonbury. You just mud all over your feet and nowhere to be seen. But again, everyone was in a great mood. This was, this was going to be a special night. <laughs> Back in Liverpool, the streets were deserted. As kickoff approached, fans were packing out pubs to watch the match. <laughs> Lifelong Liverpool fan Paul Danes was watching in a bar in the city. I was here in Sam's bar. Uh, come up with my cousin. Couldn't find anywhere to go. It was chock it everywhere. My cousin went on a little mooch, gave us a ring and he said, get round here, decent space, not as mad. So uh, we were stuck up just close to the bar on the big screen, got a good spec. Paul's 19-year-old son, Lee, had made the trip to Istanbul. I was, I was just wondering where my lad was and whether he was having a good time. Over in Milan, fans were expecting nothing less than an Italian victory. Most people knew that if Liverpool were going to win this match, they would need every bit of luck they could get. Luis Garcia said before the game, he said they didn't want anyone to touch the cup, you know, it's a bad omen. And as we got out, Shevchenko and Kaka touched the cup, so we looked at each other and thought, well, you know, maybe that'll come back to haunt them. Nobody expected us to be in the final. And we knew it's our maybe chance of, the, of our lives, you know, to, to go there playing against AC Milan. Few of them have a glimpse of hope, but most of them were just saying it's going to be a nice evening of football without being too optimistic at all. Because they knew they were the underdog by far. To win this would be absolutely fantastic achievement. And it obviously. Liverpool start the European Cup 2005, Champions League, the fresh name. Obviously, the thoughts before the game that was going to be a tight game. and. I felt maybe one goal may win it, whoever gets the first goal. Delivers it low, what a start! Paolo Maldini! It's a goal of Maldini! He grabbed it the number one! He grabbed the capital of the Monte Lupa! But they got that to Milan! The Milan captain strikes first in the first. What's going on? You know, they've scored like you know, in the first minute of the game. It's too quick. It's too quick. Let's start again. Let's start again. You know, maybe we haven't been ready yet or something like this, but it was a shock. It was a very, very uh, difficult moment for us. I thought to myself, how's the team going to react now? Because we were a team, uh, a, a solid team. We weren't a team made to take the game to somebody else. That wasn't in the makeup. If we abandon everything now and we just go chasing it, these are murderers. We did start shouting for a penalty. There was a handball incident, we thought, and people were still shouting as the ball went to the other end. And here's the trouble. It's Shevchenko. It's Crespo. It's 2-0 Milan. And it just gets worse for Liverpool before half-time. Uh, for possibly being a penalty within 15, 20 seconds, AC Milan feel the game is over. It was definitely a penalty. I mean, in my opinion, it was a penalty. And as I said, then maybe a few of us are moaning at the referee or looking at the referee and bang, bang, it's 2 0 just before half time. So it was, you know, a blow to the a goal. You sometimes lose yourself in the injustice of it. And meanwhile, the other team have. 
gone with the ball and, and uh, you're up shit creek. They scored second goal and at that moment I said, oh, it doesn't look good at all. I, I thought, oh my God, 2-0 down, it doesn't look good. Everybody thought this is in the bank now. So after the second one, everybody was already cheering and uh, sending texts home and calling friends. Uh, they were expecting a few more from AC Milan, frankly. Since the difference in the match was so clear that undoubtedly we would have scored so, some more. And they split again here, another chance for Crespo! Another goal for Alan Crespo! And it's 3-0 to the When the third goal went in, it was kind of a horror movie unfolding very, very slowly before your eyes, and you were out of control, you couldn't do anything. It's like a nightmare, really. Just this kind of shock, really, you know, that we were being stripped, stripped bare and humiliated before the world. It was a big shock, big, big shock. Uh, I was very angry. I think most of, of the players, they were very angry, you know. Sounds defeatist, but you're just thinking, I, you know, can't wait for this game to be over three. I don't want this to be an embarrassment and, you know, go maybe four, five, maybe even six, you know what I mean? Because at the time, the way they were playing, they were just cutting us open. It was just too much quality for us first half. After this first half, I started to write my story. Glory, glory, hallelujah, AC Milan. <laughs> We had cracked open the champagne and started celebrating. There was no question we were going to be European champions. What kept going through my head was, what are the worst defeats in European Cup finals? Are we going to suffer? Is there going to be some sort of historical, horrible moment here where we record the worst defeats in European Cup final? Game over. And to be honest, on air, I said, that's it. No way back. That was the lowest of low as a Liverpool fan I've ever been. 3 0 down and seemingly on the verge of European humiliation, Liverpool's dream of a fifth title was almost certainly over. Survival depends on the ability to evolve. Introducing the most advanced Mondeo yet. The new 2005 Mondeo. Evolution is beautiful. Inside tomorrow's sun, we've teamed up with Barclays for your free official fan's guide to the Barclays Premiership. You've had the summer off, now get your brain back in shape with all you need to know about the new season. Swap up on your football with a free official 48-page Barclays Premiership guide. <laughs> Only inside tomorrow's sun. We love it. Ah, fingers. Let me give you a little tip. Now this, my friend, is the only way to eat a fully loaded burger without getting the old Tommy K on your pumps. Whilst, of course, enjoying a delicious glass of pins. All together now, bun in, bun out, drinky do, mm mm, bun in, bun out. Sean likes to look good. But looking good costs money. At least when Sean uses his Morgan Stanley Platinum card, he gets a cashback bonus of up to 2%. This year, he's earned £105, money he's put towards a break. From looking good. The Morgan Stanley Credit Card. Why not get paid for the things you buy anyway? Goodbye, Fanta Light. Hello, Fanta Z. Real Fanta taste, zero added sugar. Try Icy Lemon and Summer Fruits. Now I ain't too big and I 
ain't too tall, but for car insurance, give Sainsbury's a call. I could save you money, get your premiums down by as much as £180. Little Bill. Tiny bill. Apply online or call Sainsbury's Car Insurance for your little bill. It's like we're connected or something. Get ready for the tricked out and all new Herbie Fully Loaded. Herbie is a car. It's about time your loyalty was rewarded. Renew your contract and we'll give you 50% extra minutes and texts for life, only in O2 stores. O2, a world that revolves around you. Where are you going? Britain. Where are your papers? They're in the cab. Hey, Mike. Get this free toy. Thanks. Brewed slightly stronger for a smoother taste. Carlsberg Export. So good the Danes hate to see it leave. Now available in extra cold. To Steve Redgrave, Chris Evans, oh, they've done it. and Ronan Keating. Just some of the names captained by Colin Montgomery. The All-Star Cup, live from the Celtic Manor Resort, August Bank Holiday Weekend, Sky One. AC Milan 3, Liverpool 0. The Reds' European dream was turning into a nightmare. Some Liverpool fans were finding it all too much to bear. The third goal, just before half time, I just I couldn't see any coming back into coming back into the game at all. I just didn't see any way that we're going to go back into the game. I remember I walked to the back of the stadium at half time. And I was just literally kind of shocked walking around, and, and a, a fella stormed past me and left. And I shouted to him, "Come, come back in, mate!" You know, it's not that bad. And he went to give me the two fingers, and I just thought, well, I know what he's thinking. I went up to the top of behind the goal. And seeing to be just walking round in some like state of shock is all I can I might describe it. And then just just before the second half was due to start, some mad reason decided to leave. Milan have hit them heavy, and Milan have eight fingers on the trophy. In the Liverpool dressing room, Rafa Benitez was facing the most important half-time team talk of his managerial career. Everyone's just deflated, no one really said a word. I'm just sitting there, you know, head in their hands type of thing. But uh, as I said, my fear was that it wasn't going to be an embarrassment for the club because, I mean, at that stage, you're not believing that you're going to win the cup. Uh, I think it's done and dusted, unless we're about to see the most miraculous game of European football ever. The coach said, Jesse, keep your head up, keep your head up, because, uh, uh, you know, his second half is coming up. Uh, can you keep your head up? I said, yeah, keep your head up. If I can. Sorry, we're losing 3 0, you know, uh, and how you can keep your head up. No more goals. I said, no more goals because if we, if we consider again and again, it can be very bad. It can, it can be debacle, it can be bad. And I said, maybe if we score one, maybe, you know, we need at school we score at least one goal for our supporters. I just felt so sorry for them that, you know, a lot of them have paid that type of money to be able to go on there and then we've put on a performance like that and then they're still doing their bit singing and. You know, cheering us on, and you know, we're thinking, you know, we've basically let them down. As you can hear, even though it's 3 0 down, the Liverpool fans are just seeing if sheer fan power alone can lift the team. And the North Stand started singing, You'll Never Walk Alone. And it's funny, I've never heard it sung like that before, ever. It was almost like, it was like a prayer. Everybody just wanted it so, so much. And there was a, almost a kind of desperation in it. I've never, ever heard it sung like that. They sung, uh, you know, throughout uh, half time, and uh, I think that shows how passionate they are and how great supporters they are. And um, obviously it's good to, good to know you have these, these people behind you. I don't know if it was... The, the, the fans feeling sorry for themselves while trying to rally the team. I'd like to think it was the latter. 
Uh, and it was superb the way they sang it, right from the heart. And, and it touched the nerve, obviously, the players and, and the manager said, well, you know, listen to that. You've got to go out and do it for them. In the Milan dressing room, the players felt they already had one hand on the trophy. Even they were surprised at just how easy the first half had been. Well, when you look at it, it went, went quite easy, to be fair. I think nobody expected it, that we, uh, that we went 3-0 up in, in the first half, not even ourselves, of course, you know. The game was finished for all, for all, except then for the God, for God. The second half starts and we see that all, all our players are impeccably groomed <laughs> and start worrying about the herdos more than the way of playing. And we start having a, yeah, yeah. a bit of a funny feeling. Things started really going downhill, really downhill, in six minutes. What was about to unfold would surely go down as the most incredible six minutes in football history. That's what gave everyone the lift, you know, just even the supporters got the supporters going again, give the players a bit of belief. But here's the one that had to get that goal. It was almost written in stone that he should get that goal and take everybody up a notch. He's saying, come on, let's give this a go. Let's have a go. Let's try and just give it our best shot. It wasn't like, you know, I've just scored a consolation goal. It's like, you know something, we've got enough time to turn this round. And, you know, when, you're, when your captain calls to arms like that, then let's have it. The felt of Smeets are just outside the area, and I'm, I'm thinking, don't hit it, don't waste it, don't hit it, don't hit it. And then he hit it and it went in. <laughs> I'm like, all right, hit it. <laughs> I'm not like big shooter, but sometimes, you know, you have to try to shoot and there were too many players that had no, no other option. Uh, so I try to hit it as, I, as much as I can and just try to, you know, hit the target and uh, that was a great moment. That was great reward for me and uh, uh, I, I, I didn't know what to do. I just ran and enjoyed it. That was really good. When Vladi scores and Vladi runs away like that, that was belief. That was understanding that we can win it. And you think, game on, game on, and the excitement. And people were going, Ooh. <laughs> I saw every Liverpool player wanting to get the ball and get it back to the halfway line. Because they knew then they had them on the rack. Obviously, the first one gives you a bit of, bit of hope, but I think this one gives you belief now that you're, you are going to zoom. You had you know, another half an hour to go. I think you could just see in the man faces, must have been, you know, couldn't believe what was going on. Probably the same way we felt when it was 2 or 3 0. They, they, at this point, were like shell shots. Suddenly, people were quiet, smiles were gone away, people started switching off the mobile phones, which were receiving texts from friends. Oh, congratulations, you won again. And that's when the mood really changed. Not with the first one, but with the second one. Steve, who, who does the sports side of the Radio City, said to me, now, John, we know what you like, you get carried away sometimes, which I do, and uh, I get a bit loud over the microphone when I'm celebrating. He said, we need this game for the archives, so when Liverpool score, please, you know, which is easier said than done, you know what I mean? The Liverpool fans are going nuts. Just possible, just possible. Oh, here's a ball from oh, Carrigan. Oh, it's, 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 it's a penalty for Liverpool! Stevie's made that search and run in, and the slightest the touch, Stevie's gone to ground, and you think, oh, get in there, it's a penalty. What a turnaround if this goal can go in. There's just a shriek of like 
complete disbelief and euphoria. And then there's that horrible, who's going to take the penalty? Who's going to take the penalty? I actually had the ball, and Lewis Garcia tried to take me off it, and I thought, no, you're, you're, you're not taking it. I wanted Alonso to take it, you know, he's a great passer of the ball, a great striker of the ball. 40,000 Liverpool fans inside here hold their breath. Hundreds of thousands hold their breath on Merseyside. It's Xabi Alonso for three, three, it's safe, and Alonso follows it in! It's wonderful! It's marvellous! Right foot penalty, left foot in the back of the net, he's mobbed, it's 3-0. You can now take me out and kill me because this doesn't matter. Whatever happens the rest of my life doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. All hell's broken loose and I've gone absolutely crackers. Well, I leapt about and I just kept, I mean, you know, they kept sharing it again and again, and I kept watching it again and again. You couldn't watch enough of it. I mean, it was just fantastic. Everybody's just kind of tumbling all over the place and kissing each other and hugging each other. I think I've, I did it, I kissed a lot of people that night. This is, this is incredible, you know? Am I, am I um, believing this, what's going on? Because it was, it was just, it was incredible. How can you be 3 0 down at one stage and you're 3 3 and you think, what's going to happen next? In the space of six minutes, Liverpool had turned the European Cup final on its head. The Italians couldn't quite believe what was unfolding before their eyes. I think we just lost concentration, especially when you look at the kind of goals we conceded. But we were also unlucky. In a game of football, you can lose your concentration more than once, and you're never punished for it. We lost our concentration three times, and they scored three times. In six minutes, the Liverpool changed the history. Three goals against AC Milan, one of the most strongest defense in the world. In football, it helps if you're lucky, but they were good because they didn't give up, even when they were 3-0 down. You just have to admire them for believing in themselves the way they did and for not throwing in the towel. Meanwhile, in Istanbul, Liverpool fan David Cruikshank, who'd left the match at half-time, was on his way to the city centre in a taxi, completely unaware of his team's remarkable comeback. So as we arrived into Istanbul, pulled up a set of traffic lights, Someone held, held both hands up, went like that. He thought he was um, having a joke with us. And he, he shook his head and said, now it's 3 all. switched the radio on, and the taxi driver confirmed this. So he said to him, right, get to the nearest bar. So he took us to a bar, and it, it was 3 all. We even contemplated going back, but we would have we we missed everything and perhaps not even got back into the ground, so we were pretty much stuck. Back at the Ataturk Stadium, the sheer madness of the last six minutes was just sinking in. I remember grabbing my son and just made him look at that scoreboard and thinking, at any moment, I'm going to cry here, but I, but I didn't. I just said, look at that scoreboard and never, ever in your life give up. You know, just look at it and go, anything is possible. And then 3-3 three, three in the Ataturk Stadium against a shell-shocked Milan side. There's every chance of that gleaming trophy coming home on the plane. Oh, John, John! <laughs> Dear me, this is amazing. Yeah, it's wonderful news. It's, we're starting again from scratch, but let's be realistic. The games of football don't behave in this way, and this is still AC Milan. So I just, I just felt, you know, let's be grateful it's, it's three all. You know, I wasn't so much, you know, sit back on it, but we wanted to make sure that we didn't do nothing stupid because before when we were trying to chase the goals, obviously we were leaving ourselves very open, but you know, we didn't want to see, uh, leave ourselves open at the back anymore after we got a 3-3. Against all the odds, Liverpool had come back from the dead. But with the score still 3-3 after 90 minutes, the game went into extra time. Their efforts had left them physically shattered and Milan began to threaten once more. Liverpool was with, with, without stamina because they had this burst of effort and for 60 minutes Milan attacked and uh, Liverpool's goalkeeper made, made just the match of his life. Oh, these are nervous times, Fingernail's being bitten right down to the edge 
They find it within themselves to try and encourage their team on. But there's DJ here! Good save! A wonderful double save from Dudek! How on earth he did that, I've no idea. And I, I don't I think the Pope done that, Phil. <laughs> Shevchenko misses this with less than three minutes to go. You might as well start carving Liverpool's name on this trophy. I've seen the ball flying. I never saw that before, flying so high above the goal. No, that is impossible, is it? No, how is that possible? I just couldn't believe, not he'd missed it, that, that dude that had saved it. I thought the chances were about seven billion to one that James Judek would be our hero that night. I phoned my old goalkeeper coach and said, Jesse, how did you do that? I said, if I knew, I would tell you. Shevchenko, as a striker, is, is phenomenal. You know, he will grace any team, his movement on the day. He was, I mean, we couldn't get near him in the first half. So for him to miss from that distance, it was like, <sighs> anything's possible now. Yeah, everything just went in slow motion, and you just, I was just waiting for the ball to hit the back of the net. And it was just one of, you know, as I said it, as I just said, everyone's just waiting, and I could not believe it. The damage it did because it was Shevchenko, who was the hero, who's the one there looking for inspiration, that has done because he didn't have the confidence when it came to the penalties. With the team still level after extra time, the match would now be settled in the most nerve-wracking way possible. The penalty shootout. The stakes are not being there. It's very, very tough, very daunting, very nervy. But uh, that's what we can all get nerve. You know, we'd perhaps it'd be nice to have Bruce Grubber in there doing all his knee trembles and the shakes and everything, wouldn't it? After extra time, the manager just went round everyone, asking if they wanted to take one. He came to me, I think I was the second or third he came to me, and I said, yeah, so I thought I was taking one. I thought I must be second or third on the list, but he'd gone round the old team. Some people obviously didn't fancy it, some did. The television cameras were on Jamie Carragher and Jersey Dudek before the shootout, and Jamie Carragher was gesticulating to Dudek, and he was obviously, he was having a real go at him, and I couldn't for the life of me understand what was going on. Jersey's a really nice fella, and sometimes he's maybe a little bit too nice, you know, so I just wanted to make sure he'd he done everything he could to, you know, wind them up, put them off, you know, as I said, remember what Grobla did, maybe that has an effect, and hopefully it's had an effect on the Milan players. I, I can picture Cara now, I just, just grab an older Jersey, Jersey must be like, this raging lunatic of a scouser here. He's like, I'll do crap, I'll do crap, I'll do crap. Jersey, Jersey, you have to, you have to do, you know, you have to put them off, you have to just do everything to destroy them, you know, uh, just, you remember, you remember, maybe do this gobble at things, you know, the stuff uh, he, he did in the Champions League final 20 years ago. I said, uh, of course I remember this, but I said, hey, let me, let me focus first on the penalties. I went into the goal and I was so relaxed. I knew it was thousands, thousands of people on the, on the, you know, on the stands. It was 80,000, millions of the, the telly, but I've seen only that guy, that ball and no one else. Just was starting to just you know make uh, some movements in the goal because it was not like dance. There was not nothing like this. There was like do on purpose something that put much more pressure on the players. Serginio picks his spot, head down. Hits yes! over the bar! It's this. It's Milan's worst nightmare. This was penalty. One of the best. Uh, penalty kicker called Serginho, Brazilian player, did not even hit the goal. I mean, like two meters out of, of the post. And that tells you, it's not the body, it's the brain. You know, the pressure is always on when you, when you take a penalty and um, it was helped a bit by the fact that Serginho missed. But, um, you know, at the same time, you just hope to, to put it away and uh, get your team one nil up. It's a man against Dida. Liverpool's first chance to score from the penalty spot. Holtz is right. Yes. He scores! <laughs> Liverpool are 1 0 up. Dudek once again moves along the line. Perlo against Dudek. It's John Dalton 
Dida stands on his line. Risa can hit the ball so well. Please let him score. It's saved. Dida gets one back. Miracolo di Dida. If Dudek can force a miss, it's Kaka who's going to take it. Dudek's going down. He's doing a grovel off. He's all over the place and it's into the top. 2-2, the advantage still with Liverpool. And Vladimir Smyser steps forward. Benitez said, do you want to take the penalties? I said, yes, I, I definitely, I, I'd like to take the penalties. He, said, he asked me, what about the Mike Trump? I said, I said, for penalties, I need to run only three, four metres. I'm fine, boss. <laughs> and looks directly into the eyes of Dido. It's a long run-up from the check. Hits it right foot in! We're a goal away from the European Cup. Commentators only going to say one thing. Could this be the goal that yeah. wins Liverpool the European Cup? Could this be the goal that wins AC Milan the European Cup? That's all he can say in a penalty shootout until that, that's it. You know, I, I did say done. one thing which I was spot on with Shevchenko came up and said he won't miss. Shevchenko, who scored the winning goal at Old Trafford two and years ago to hand score. Milan the he's, European Cup. He'll score. He'll score. He's a really good player. Him. Shevchenko contro Dudek. With Liverpool on the brink of European glory, Andrei Shevchenko stepped up to take AC Milan's next penalty. He simply had to score to keep the game alive. Summer. Oh. Football is back. Yes, that's more like it. A star-studded launch to a bright new season. Brilliant. Arsenal. Oh, outrageous. Versus Chelsea. Shit, my class. Big play, brilliant. The FA Community Shield, Sunday 2.30, Sky Sports 1. a butter from the Emerald Isle Nobody can better Pure as Irish meadows And soft as Irish weather We don't use oils you get in spreads It's naturally softer butter instead Spreadable, delectable The soft pure Gaelic gold On crumpets, toast and bread and all The taste is quite incredible It's natural and it's softer And it comes from Kerrygold Alexander, director's cut on DVD, a new version, action-packed with breathtaking new footage. Alexander, director's cut, out now on DVD. Easy to pick up and easy to carry. The new 18-pack from Groves. Free inside tomorrow's Daily Express, start your collection of romantic love songs. A double CD that's perfect for those special moments. Featuring classic tracks by Marvin Gaye, Tom Jones, 10CC and more. Don't miss Volume 1, Free Inside Tomorrow's Daily Express. With Volume 2 inside this Sunday's Sunday Express. Express delivery. She's a killer, this is Power Pop Anthems. Wow. First time ever, 48 Power Pop Classics on two fantastic CDs. This is Power Pop at its very best. Power Pop Anthems, get it now. Digital's great. Phone cameras, digital cameras, we can shoot all we want. But we hardly ever print our pictures. That's the best part of photography. Pictures. With the Kodak kiosk, get Kodak quality prints from digital. For digital prints in seconds, look for the nearest Kodak kiosk sign. Pictures are back. At Boots and other leading photo stores. 12,000 people can't be wrong. In the UK's largest independent survey ever on product innovation, the choice for number one in hair care may surprise you. It wasn't a designer or even a salon brand. The winner was... Pan 10 Pro V Repair and Protect Shampoo and Conditioner. A perfect recipe for healthy looking shiny hair. Pan 10 Pro V Repair and Protect. Hair care product of the year. Voted number one. Make it your favorite. 
Right, what have we got to eat? I know. Why don't we try boiled egg and onion? It sounds a bit basic. We could have onion, courgette, and a boiled egg on the side. Look, there's some cheese. Why don't we have cheese and onion and an egg? Oh, for goodness sake, you could have a courgette frittata. Eggs make a meal out of anything. And you can do the washing up this time. Lion eggs. They're fast food and good for you. Oh, for goodness sake. Mazda 5. Surprisingly stimulating. Ever felt an eerie chill in the room? But you're not alone. A trick of the light? Or a paranormal experience? Let the experts decide. Ghost Hunters. Tuesday at 9. Sky 1. Bounty hunter Robert De Niro must outwit the mob in Midnight Run next, after Sport Matters. European Footballer of the Year, Andrei Shevchenko, was next up to the penalty spot. If he missed, the European Cup was level. When I've seen Shevchenko come to take the last penalty, I said, hey, Andrei, you pick the same side as always. I was waiting, what was going to happen, you know, what he will do, he is the best striker in the world. I never thought it, it can be so strong the feeling. So happy. Absolutely brilliant. A lot of big boys cried. <laughs> and they didn't mind. At the end, yeah, you know, I've seen a lot of grown men cry. Some ex-players, tears in their eyes, and uh, it, was, it was a night never to be forgotten. There's a time in my life I'd love to go back to. I think probably last year as he saved that penalty, we're all sprinting to balls, you know, the feelings, unbelievable. You realise that you've done something special, you know. The, all the people, the, all the players, you know, fantastic. It was just... We... we you, you can't just express uh, how, how big is this. For Liverpool Football Club, what had once been a distant dream was now a reality. By lifting a fifth European Cup, the trophy was theirs to keep. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on Merseyside, Liverpool fans were celebrating their team's fifth European Cup triumph in pubs across the city. Paul Dames was joining in the festivities. The place at the ceiling, everyone went mental. Some of us, some of us just sat there because we just couldn't believe it. As TV cameras beam back images of the team celebrating with the cup, Paul's son Lee took the opportunity to join in with his heroes. Just being two stewards standing here 
in front of a gate. I've just pointed onto the pitch and uh, and uh, just pointed at the gate and they've just opened it for me. The team were making a way to, way, way, way to the supporters and I seen this yellow visi vest in her face that I knew and I went, I don't believe that. Nearly ripped my cousin's arm off our Roy. I said, there's our Lee. It's like that. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> no, Paul, you don't. Next thing you know, he's dancing with the team. My husband one went, what the hell it is, Ali? A few players here, uh, Ali Kuehl it was, who said to one of the players, who's this fella? I heard him say, I just say, said, just got on the pitch, and he said, oh, all right, sounds. And he was just running with us, you know, and he was shouting at Stevie, 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 give me that cup, please, give me that cup. And Steve said, yeah, go away, go away. I said, yeah, of course, go away. Next one was a sore, and he's got all the cup, and he's kissing it. That was the icing on the cake, it was just, I don't believe, the greatest moment in the Reds' history, and the youngest has got his face right in the middle of it. Jamie, you said you wanted to write your place in history to join the others. Now you've done it, can you believe it? Fucking right, lad! I've touched him into more than that. He'd obviously blagged his way on, and he had a shell shoot with another pool, so that's obviously kidding the people around the pitch. And yeah, good luck to him, as I said, he's on this TV programme now, and he's probably it's a story to tell for years to come. I've got the pictures there to at home, framed in my bedroom. Just they're there for the rest of my life, aren't they? Back in Milan, the Italians were finding it hard to come to terms with what they'd seen. Any footballer or any fan will tell you that it's better to lose 3 0 without ever touching the ball than to lose the way that we did. It all changed in those terrible six minutes. We'll never forget them. It was utterly absurd to go from 3-0 up to 3-all. We were all ready to celebrate, and we end up losing. Of course, for our fans, it was very disappointing, and uh, everybody works for, for, for Milan and um, for the players. You know, so, um, I felt sorry for them as well because, I mean, I'm a lion here. No, I did feel, but I thought about it because we'd seen them during the day and, you know, they, I didn't feel sorry for them. <laughs> I didn't feel sorry for them at all. As Liverpool fans celebrated around the world, the Ataturk Olympic Stadium became Anfield for one night only. There's no rush, I just want to stay, I don't want to leave. My sister sung You'll Never Walk Alone about 50 times. You know, then there was the Gerard song and the Carragher song and Rafa Benitez. Got a couple of waves off Rafa. Ah. At the end of the match, we weren't in our seats, though, because our mates were just over the wall from us, so we went running round to go meet up with, up with them. And my mate's got the best video, because he's standing on his seat taking a film of me running over singing, waving my scarf, and he falls off, he falls off his chair, and it sort of goes down like this and it comes back, I'm just laughing. The next morning, nursing hangovers even kebabs couldn't cure, fans began the long journey home. So I'm walking towards my, my gate, police stops me, and I see Gerard and all the Liverpool walk, walking by with the cap, and I'm held there, and everybody clapping, and my, my jaw dropping, looking at, at these guys. That's my cup. You should not take it away from me. Welcome back to Sky Sports News and Liverpool City Centre, because Liverpool are the European champions for the fifth time. As the Reds returned home in triumph, the people of Liverpool were preparing to welcome back their heroes. It went from being just like a couple of hundred people to all of a sudden, it was thousands and thousands and thousands. People that hanging out of windows, people up on the statues in the square, it was just unbelievable. Yeah, you know how important is the club and we are really proud. For the players and the supporters. I think I have the best supporters in the world. Yeah, you look at these people here and uh, yeah, it makes you want to be winning things for them. If you live in Liverpool or near Liverpool, 
You're not allowed to be indifferent to football. So if your team bring back the European Cup, well, you, you're going to go. You're going to go out on the street and you're going to watch them parade that cup because that's for you. European Cup winners have always been my dad's mates, and they've always been my dad's age. And suddenly I saw the pictures of these boys. They just looked so young and so taken aback by the whole thing. And a lot of them looked really close to tears at times. And they started playing You'll Never Walk Alone, and then everybody was just drowning out the sound system. And it was really, really, really emotional. I, I was really choked. And I just said, oh, I think I was working then. I just said, oh, well, I'll, I'll just, let, um, just let you listen to the music for a bit. And it's because I, I was thinking, I'm not going to be able to speak through this. I, was, I had a huge lump in my throat, and I was thinking, I can't cry, I can't cry. We want to get up there and tell them exactly how proud they made us. And it's a... Got it wearing your heart and your sleeve, it's been looked down on, but it's a great, I think it's a great emotion, a great togetherness, a great community spirit. And it was like, we're just getting out there and thanking them for making us happy. It is the best night and day of my life ever, bar none. It was just that brilliant. There are places. A lot of people, they remind you of that game, of course, and, and it's, it's hard to, uh, to forget that particular game, of course, you know, when you lose a game like that. I was proud to be part of this team, and, uh, and you know, lifting this cup, I said, I never felt happiest in my life than, than that night. It was so emotional that, uh, you know, I, can't remember, I, I know I, it can't be better. I don't think, I mean, I've ever felt so bad, though. That's the biggest sports disappointment I ever had in all, in all my life. I'm quite confident Liverpool will win the European Cup again in my lifetime, so I'll definitely not leave you leaving early. There is no... A couple of weeks after the final, uh, my wife met one guy in hospital, and he said, are you Jersey Dudek wife? She, she said, yes, I am. I said, tell him. That after the penalties, I was taken to the hospital because of my heart problem. But he said, "Tell him, do not worry about this. I'm a very happy guy, you know." <laughs> and I was just. Uh... It's one of the greatest nights of my life. In sheer emotion, pleasure, sharing, uh, atmosphere, drama, everything. On the 25th of May 2005, Liverpool Football Club lifted the European Cup after achieving the most phenomenal comeback in football history. There will never be another night quite like it. I've got, you know, two kids, and that's that's obviously more important than, than football. But I mean, if, if the closest second you can ever get is uh, obviously winning the European Cup. Next here on Sky One. I'm getting my hundred thousand any which way you want it. Bounty hunter Robert De Niro is out to collect his fee in Midnight Run.